We need not fear, for the heroes of all time have gone before us. Joseph Campbell. Start over. We need not fear, for the heroes of all time have gone before us. Joseph M. Campbell. Joseph M. Campbell had an idea, a monomyth, if you will, a masculine journey. Um, a model that we could understand and comprehend the totality of our human experience in masculine and feminine terms. <clears throat> I will be using the masculine terminology to try to depict the life and times of Crazy Horse for the sole purpose of trying to deliver a people's essence or spirit out of one man. Because in this one man's life, he found totality and redemption within the masculine journey model of Joseph M. Campbell. Joseph M. Campbell's journey model is very complex um, with many different parts. We are going to use three distinct parts for this brief synopsis. We are going to use the call to adventure in which we're going to introduce the supernatural aid. We are going to deal with the trials um, in terms of the times of Crazy Horse and we're going to frame that within the uh, embodiment of white expansion and then we're going to do the transfiguration or the return home and try to break down the masculine journey model in these three distinct parts. The first part is the call. Any masculine journey model, uh, the hero per se, has to go out onto a call or into a call, into himself. He has to be delivered into a different world. Um, Crazy Horse will do this through a vision, but his vision will in many ways be introduced to him through a supernatural aid, someone by the name of Conquering Bear. Crazy Horse at the age of 12 is going to see Conquering Bear killed by white soldiers. And he is going to set off, because of this incident, in seeking of his vision. Um, a vision that all Lakota males would seek. And he would go off and he would uh, seek this vision. He would have this vision. And he would then come back after this vision and with a more clarified picture as to where he was going, what his purpose was, and what he was supposed to do. But Conquering Bear acted as a spiritual aid, and this is one of the foundational components to Joseph M. Campbell's masculine journey model. Someone that introduces our character to himself, or someone that provides wisdom. Um, someone that propels this person forward. And this is what Conquering Bear does to Crazy Horse. From the simple fact that it was his, the incident involving Conquering Bear, his death, that pushes Crazy Horse forward. So because even though we never talked to him, never received actual spoken wisdom from Conquering Bear, Conquering Bear acts as his supernatural aid because he pushes him into the call. A call that is going to allow him to engage the trials and tribulations of his life through white expansion. The world of Crazy Horse in the 1840s, 50s, 60s, and 70s was a world of white western expansion. A world in which the whites and the Lakota west of the Missouri River, confronted one another, um, had to deal with one another, and it was a world in which Crazy Horse grew up in. He would grow up knowing this enemy. He would grow up fighting this enemy. He would become a hero to a people because of his willingness to fight this enemy and to try to stave off um, annihilation, if you will, or a way of life. Crazy Horse would fight the enemy at the Fetterman uh, battle, um, at the Little Bighorn. He would try to route them out of the Black Hills as they searched for gold. And he was always trying to protect his way of life, a Lakota way of life, a spirit of his people. But ultimately, he realized that the trial was just too much, that even though he could hold out on his own, he had an obligation to protect his people. Thus, he had to sacrifice himself for his people. And this is another element of Campbell's journey model, this sacrifice, um, being able to give yourself up for a collective whole. And this is something that Crazy Horse does as he surrenders to white authorities who will ultimately kill him after his arrest. But the final stage of this journey, according to Campbell, is the return home. And I dare say that Crazy Horse returned home some 140 years after his death. Um, if you go to the Black Hills and you drive up to Thunderhead Mountain, you will see a carving being carved out of the stone. Um, a depiction of the image of Crazy Horse, a, a way to express the totality of the Lakota experience 
through the image of this one man that is built upon this mountain. And I would say here that as this granite starts to take shape, that we have a transfiguration. Um, we have Crazy Horse returning home. We have him completing his journey because his vision and his spirit and all of the things that made him what he is live and breathe within this stone structure, within this uh, example of who the Lakota were, what they represented. So when you go and you stand before this, it is a very interesting experience because you can almost hear Crazy Horse speak. You can almost feel the pulse of his heart. You can almost sense the blood on his hands and what he did for his people. So it is kind of a symbol of who these people were, what they represent, um, and it's this transfiguration model, this coming back to life, if you will, this final return home that really engages a set of Lakota today um, and projects them into a past and allows us as non-Lakota people to understand this past in its complete form, understand it through the eyes of somebody else instead of our own eyes. And in that way, and at that time, Crazy Horse returns home. He returns home through this image in Thunderhead Mountain. And that is why he is a hero of stone and spirit, because the spirit speaks, and it speaks through the transfiguration of the stone.